when fanatics acquire the licenses from Major League Baseball and the MLB Players Association to produce baseball cards, speculation became reality. The announcement of the deal to acquire Tops was made on Tuesday past week, and it includes the trading card and collectibles divisions in addition to Tops retaining control of its candy or confectionery business and gift card business. Luckily for you, Fortune Fastlaner, we've prepared all the information you need to know about Fanatics buying top sports trading cards and Michelle and Ness Jersey Co. within just a few months of each other. We won't let you wait for it too long, so let's dive in headfirst. Fear speculation that this deal would happen has been circulating for months. Fanatics announced back in April that they acquired the MLB licensing rights. The company causing the most buzz for Tops these days is Fanatics. It recently pulled a coup with its acquisition of the exclusive Star Wars trading card license from Tops, and it has also taken over the licenses for Marvel, DC, and many other licenses. With Fanatics acquiring Tops, they can acquire all of its brands designs and trademarks for a small amount of money. Additionally, in order to use the MLB team names and logos for cards from 2023 to 2025, Fanatics must obtain a license from Tops. Thus, yes, a Fanatics takeover of Tops would make a lot of sense. We also noted that Tops might be too proud to sell their company to the Fanatics Corporation and could instead use this time for their own branding. Yet the deal made sense to fanatics just too well. This is a perfect example of how to employ effective business strategy. Fanatics swoop in and take over their competitors, leaving them no choice but to lower their prices or risk losing sales. Tops had an initial deal valued at $1.3 billion with a potential to come public. But when Tops lost their license, the deal was put on hold. And then Fanatics fly in like a vulture to acquire Tops at a fraction of the price, paying an estimated $500 million for a wholly owned business. Let's look at how this announcement affects each sport and what current licensing deals might look like in the future. You need a license from the Players Union, such as the MLBPA, in order to produce cards that feature a player's name and photo. Then you need a league license from the team, like an MLB license for example. Number 1. Basketball Card Licenses Since 2009, Panini has been the exclusive licensee for the NBA and the NBPA. Fanatic signed a deal to become the exclusive licensee starting in 2026. Number 2. Baseball Card Licenses Baseball League licenses fall under tops. Panini and Fanatics. Beginning in 2023, the MLBPA will be transferred exclusively to Fanatics. MLB licensing agreements expire in 2025 at the end of its alliance with Tops, while Fanatics gets the MLBPA license in 2026. Number 3. Hockey Card Licenses The company that owns NHL and NHLPA is Upper Deck. They've recently announced the signing of a long-term contract, although no specific deal was put forward. Number 4. Football Card Licenses Taking over the NFLPA license in 2026 and the NFL license in 2028, Panini is currently the most significant gaming company on the market. The business has been working with Fanatics to take over the NFL license starting 15 years later but negotiations have not yet concluded. Now, what cards can Fanatics produce from here? Fanatics was able to hit the ground running with Topps' and Bowman's dedicated brands now. Thanks to this deal, Fanatics will have baseball cards under both brands for future business opportunities. They used to make baseball cards, but under the brand that made it clear they were not related to the MLB. The deal meant they now exclusively have access to use team names and logos and produce unique cards with statistical information on them. With the addition of Topps Marketing Smarts, 
Fanatics Agency can leverage legendary IP and experience with little effort. One of the top acquisitions when it comes to acquisitions is the $500 million acquisition by Fanatics. IP and brand recognition had been gained with this purchase, which might go down in history as one of the best acquisitions ever made. And I figured it was going to be difficult for them, given their limited experience with manufacturing cards. The founders of Fanatics chose to start with a supportive foundation before building a product. It is often better not to build something when the foundation is weak. It is unclear how the future of the Topps brand will look, but there's still hope. Fanatics seem to preserve certain brands, so the company has been updating them in a way that is relevant to their customers. Topps believes in the future of digital collectibles and NFTs. So I imagine that Topps NFTs are likely continuing to expand in the coming years. What about other sports? Basketball, football, hockey. For hockey, Fanatics has limited options. Since Upper Deck has signed a long-term contract with NHL and NHLPA. However, if they wanted to acquire as well as have access to the NHL licenses, they could do so by swooping in, which is what they did. Regardless of the market share, with their exclusivity contract up until 2026, Panini can't do anything until then. These collectors I've spoken to are excited about the potential return of Chrome baseball cards and Topps baseball cards in the future. However, Panini is still unannounced with an NFL license as Copymatic does have a deal with the NFL PA starting in 2026. I could see Copymatic getting an NFL license from 2024 onward and encountering some issues with Fanatics being a target. Fanatics have controlled the top spot in the baseball card market for a long time now. The present holes in their future are lack of near-term licenses in basketball and football to sports where fanatics cannot make any cards until 2026. As Panini, the maker of football and basketball team stickers, gears up for an IPO in order to acquire a slice of the Fanatics company, it may be a ripe apple for Fanatics money. With Fanatics bidding on Panini, they might not have time to compete if they don't take action soon. Josh Luber, current CEO of Fanatics Trading Cards, singled out Panini in his recent trading card manifesto. His comments focused on their use of many similar parallel cards to try and obfuscate the fact that they were still printing a lot of cards. This led them to constantly print out a lot of cards, which would eventually make the whole factory useless. For many of the companies involved, cards are a reliable source of value due to inefficiencies in supply and demand. But with the introduction of new forms of uniqueness and scarcity, which have been widely used in products like Panini Select Basketball, card companies must confront the same risk they faced in the 1990s, inflation. Will cards be worth 100,000 one by one copies? Maybe. As with most collectible goods across industries, if everything is unique, then nothing is unique, and nothing has any additional value. ROI on boxes will be low, volatility will be low, and there won't be any chance at a big hit. The box would simply be worth little or nothing, ideally worth no more than spare change, because each pack would produce slim returns after the initial purchase. The problem is simply manifested as inflation in new forms. This is on point with what Luber thinks should happen. He's thinking about the future of the hobby, so it's more attractive to collectors and investors. In the future, there will be changes to hobby as a whole with fanatics thinking of the longer term. Some criticism is still present but overall, the company appears to be thinking ahead. It makes sense that one of the pivotal moments in the history of Michelle and Nez came from a company whose name implies adaptation. The company's director of authentics and archives, Lynn Bloom, says that for them, it was more about caps and jackets until a new trend came in. The snapback. Our headwear became insanely popular. That was through the trendy snapbacks. A little more than two decades ago, Michelle and Nez found itself in an unfavorable position 
as it ran out of product to sell. But rather than fail without a fight, the company seized the moment and refused to compromise its commitment to the quality that made it distinctive. As a result, Michelinez today boasts a much broader range of products that adapt and expand with market perceptions and trends, while still maintaining its hallmark qualities all these years later. But in order to really understand it, a quick history lesson will do. Quality and authenticity are two words that stand out above all others. The roots of Michelinez date back to 1904 when two Philadelphia sportsmen, Frank Michel and Charles Nez, started a business making and selling tennis rackets and golf clubs. From the 1920s and 30s to the 1950s, they were shifting the focus from country club pursuits to more accessible pastimes. They began selling athletic equipment and apparel to sports teams, involving themselves in high school, college, and pro teams. Between those decades, they would become worn on the uniforms of Eagles, Phillies, Flyers, and other professional sports teams, as well as hundreds of high school and college squads. In the early 1950s, Converse was bought by Sisto Capolino, who'd begun working there as a clerk when he was 13 years old. Freshly arrived from his native Italy, Sisto's son Peter would join the family business and eventually take over when his father died in the late 70s. The timing was less than ideal. Unable to compete with national sporting goods chains or the major sneaker companies, Peter soon realized that his company's path was unsustainable. The need for vintage baseball jerseys matched with Capolino's genius in the summer of 2015 when he recreated vintage baseball uniforms. Unlike his competitors, he insisted that he get it right. So going over a library of old magazines, ensured he made absolutely true to the original products. Eventually, Major League Baseball reached out and they eventually came to an agreement, bringing in new fans who want Capolino's accurate, handmade replica baseball uniforms rather than brand new ones. It started in the late 90s when Michelle and Nez signed licensing deals with the NBA and NFL. While Capolino did not know at first, the timing was perfect. A handful of moments around that time helped mark a dramatic twist in the company's path, most notably Outkast rocking a variety of Atlanta-themed throwbacks in videos and photos around their 1998 release of Acqui Mini, and Allen Iverson on the cover of a certain basketball magazine with his hair blown out and a classic Phila jersey on his chest. As Bloom points out, that AI cover was a turning point for both Michelle and Nez as well as Slam. Today, they maintain a great relationship with Iverson, and their iconic jersey continues to be a popular seller for fans everywhere. Michelle and Nez turned into the brand it is now because of the throwback craze. The company quickly became a recognized name in regard to vintage style and technology. Trends come and go, but companies such as m and are always on the move in order to stay up to date with today's technology. The next step for Bloom, who has been with the company since 2001, was to design apparel. We had all that success with authentic football jerseys, so it was a natural progression for us to make other apparel, says Bloom. They partnered with their league partners, starting with track jackets and fitted hats. Popular trends like jerseys were dying out when Michelle and Nez started the throwback vintage craze, so the company continued expanding to focus on history. As Michelle and Nez broadened their customer base to include casual fans who loved the colorful designs of 70s and 80s era gear, Bloom realized his efforts to keep these groups engaged in the game would be greatly enhanced with a new product. Michelle and Nez apparel was introduced during the dead ball era, but now represents the style of games from before World War II, thanks in part to illustrative hats that players wore and fan artwork on merchandise. They also know that history is important and should be accessible, especially to people in the present day. After years of focusing on the more expensive retro jerseys, Bloom now offers more affordable NFL, 
and NBA replicas. Fans can now pick up t-shirts of their favorite old school players in a range of sizes. With social media and digital channels, customers want more player-focused content than they did in the past, when it was all about rooting for your team. Michelle Inez has been able to keep up with this trend while also adapting to other changes. For example, they say LeBron's rookie jersey to fans of every NBA team, not just Cavaliers fans. The focus is on celebrities rather than on local teams or sporting events. Since the trend of throwing back to the 90s has come around again, throwbacks aren't exactly in the same style or size. We sell a lot more mediums than we used to, she says with a laugh. The company has endured on-trend changes and even thrived as they grow. From baggy to fitted, from fully authentic to affordable retro, Michelle Inez has proved itself to be adaptable and innovative. The company now makes licensing deals with the U.S. major sports leagues, including Major League Soccer. And don't be surprised if there are iconic college jerseys on offer soon. Michelle Inez continues to expand internationally with a store in London and a recent pop-up shop in Los Angeles complementing the flagship store in Philadelphia. And there is potential for greater international growth. Closer to home, Michelle Inez has stores or dedicated retail spaces at various stadiums and arenas all around the United States. What makes this company great is the commitment to authenticity and quality, which also ensures Michelle Inez remains one of the hottest brands in sport. All of their popular designs are based on items that have long since passed from relevance, like a player who has retired or an era in sports history. As a result, things stay the same, like the company's name or the brand's products. That's it for this video, Fortune Fast Laner. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person. As a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon.